Hello and welcome to this week's News Bulletin. I'm Julia Cosby and these are the headlines. Ottawa City Council votes to increase fines for protesters. Air Canada cancels the flight of a 14-year-old girl leaving her stranded. An ongoing drought in the Horn of Africa leaves about 13 million people hungry. Boris Johnson will not apologize for comments that allegedly led to attack of labour leader. Venezuela calls for an investigation after a baby is killed on a migrant boat. World powers are set to meet with Iran in Vienna to resume talks over nuclear deal. Aaron Christopher Kelly arrested after opening fire inside a Washington grocery store. Retired Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI asks for forgiveness, but many respond that it will not be given. To begin, in response to residents' complaints over the ongoing protests, the Ottawa City Council has voted to increase penalties to $1,000 for multiple violations, including noise, idling vehicles, blocking roads, and open fires. This request has been made because Ottawa has declared a state of emergency following protests that advocate for the removal of COVID-19 mandates related to the trucking industry. Nevertheless, the council will need approval from the Ontario Court of Justice before fines can be raised. Notably, the Ottawa Police Services has also requested the deployment of 1,800 more officers in the city, but the chief remains skeptical that they will get the support they need. The girl, a Newfoundland and Labrador resident, was abandoned in Toronto after a labour disruption at the airport in her province. When she asked for help, Air Canada refused to help her find accommodations or food and told her that she had to wait two days until her next flight would be available. As a result, her mother, 2,000 miles away, panicked as she tried to arrange housing for her cashless 14-year-old daughter. While she eventually found an Airbnb that would take her, critics say that this is not the first time a child has been abandoned by Air Canada and that it is time that the airline takes more responsibility in instances where minors need assistance. Turning to the Horn of Africa, it is estimated that 13 million people are facing starvation after extreme drought has destroyed harvests and has killed much of the livestock. Food prices in the region have inflated and a lack of rain has left many in the agricultural industry out of work and more susceptible to hunger. Some experts have suggested that these extreme weather conditions are a result of climate change and will only increase with frequency as global temperatures continue to rise. Advocates for the region are calling on urgent humanitarian aid for people affected. In the UK, Prime Minister Boris Johnson's spokesperson said that the Prime Minister will not apologize to Labour leader Keir Starmer for comments made in the House of Commons, accusing Starmer for failing to prosecute infamous sex offender Jamie Salville. It has been suggested that these comments may have led to a mob of protesters swarming the Labour leader while hurling insults related to Johnson's comments and allegedly one demonstrator carried a noose. Johnson's spokesperson says that the Prime Minister has already clarified the remarks that Starmer himself is not individually responsible for the Saville case. If a sector of British society continues to misinterpret these comments, the spokesperson said, they are a tiny minority and the Prime Minister is not responsible. After months of deceit and deception, yeah. the pathetic spectacle of a man who's run out of road. Yeah. His defence, his defence that he didn't realise he was at a party. <laughs> it, it, it is so ridiculous that it's actually offensive to the British public. He's finally been forced to admit what everyone knew, that when the whole country was locked down, he was hosting boozy parties in Downing Street. Yes. Is he now going to do the decent thing and resign? Yes. I, I, I appreciate the... Uh, the, the point that he's making about the, the event that I, uh, I attended, uh, I, I, want to, I want to repeat that uh, I thought it was a, a work event, and, and Mr. Speaker, uh, I, 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 re I regret, I regret very much, I regret very much that we did not do things differently uh, that evening, uh, Mr. Speaker. As I've said, and I take responsibility and I apologise, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, but as for, as for his, uh, his political point, I don't think that he should uh, preempt the outcome of the inquiry. In other news, Venezuela is calling for an investigation to be launched into the events that led to a Coast Guard in Trinidad and Tobago killing a baby after shooting at a migrant boat. The Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago has offered his condolences for the incident. 
He insists that the incident was an unfortunate mistake by the Coast Guard, who he claims was trying to shoot the vessel's engines after being instructed to stop human traffickers. The baby died in the arms of their mother along a common route Venezuelans take to flee their precarious lives at home. The deal formerly known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, promises to lift some sanctions off of Iran if the nation curves some of its nuclear program. While Iran wants all of the program, the deal, formerly known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, promises to lift some sanctions off Iran if the nation curbs some of its nuclear program. While Iran wants all of its sanctions imposed by former U.S. President Donald Trump to be lifted, the current President Joe Biden says that the U.S. will only reveal sanctions that are deemed to be inconsistent with the deal. Over in the United States, Aaron Christopher Kelly, a 39-year-old man, was arrested on a freeway after opening fire inside of a grocery store. As a result, Kelly killed one person and injured another. This tragic incident occurred in the state of Washington. Officers who responded to the horrific event entered one minute after the report of yelling and gunshots were heard. As they entered, both victims lay near one another and life-saving techniques were employed by the officer. However, one individual had already died while the wounded individual was taken to the hospital. Lastly, the retired Pope Benedict XVI asked for forgiveness surrounding his handling of the clergy abuse cases while he was an archbishop. This has resulted in a storm of criticisms arguing that Benedict is not setting a good example of a meaningful apology within the church. Specifically, critics, including survivors of the clergy sexual abuse, argue that his apology only asked for forgiveness but did not admit to any specific wrongdoing. During his time as an archbishop, Benedict has been accused of mishandling four cases of sexual abuse and of not restricting four priests even after they were found criminally guilty. That's all for today. This has been your host, Julia Cosby. Like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications to keep up to date on current world news. Thank you.